Hello and good morning. Today uh, I have a couple of projects uh, that I want to accomplish. Working on my daily driver. Um, since it broke down the other day and I fixed it, I'm going to do some more fixes on it and use the excursion min oil. So what I want to do with this one today is remove the trim around the center console so that I can get to that EAS disable switch and uh, replace it with the same as in my wife's with an LED for an indicator. So that means removing the, the cup holder, it just lifts up in the rear and you just take it out. Then you have to undo these two screws near the head unit. And there's one screw behind the pinnacle around the or pinnacle around the instrument cluster. So you have to remove the instrument cluster pinnacle. I removed the um, under dash cover yesterday. You can see my other video. And I'll, uh, I want to do this uh, power wire for the for uh, for this clock, this digital clock. I haven't uh, mounted it yet. It's just uh, sticky tape. I want to run that power cable behind the, the center console uh, trim and hook it up to the cigar lighter power or uh, I'll probably hook it up to the, no I'll hook it up to the old uh, clock power I'll show you how I mounted this uh, standard gauge at the same time I'll do some um, finishing around the trims around the edges make it look nicer but that's for summertime it's too cold to do it now I'll also show you how I uh, rearranged these switches um, due to uh, some short cables for the switches. I wasn't able to rearrange them exactly as I wanted, but I moved the disable switch for the air suspension. I moved it over here from here, and this is the rear fog, li fog light button. It used to be uh, all the way on the left. Remember, this one is designed for right-hand drive. It's an English car, even though it's left-hand drive. There's still some leftover items from um, the right-hand side design. These buttons are part of that. So they're not perfectly set up for uh, left-hand drive, in my opinion. But this makes it easier to remove the, um, this trim. You have to take off the side, side panels which is a pain due to my USB connector. I, um, I messed up uh, mounting this, so I'll, uh, I'll uh, spend some time uh, removing this uh, trim again. I'll fix that problem once I have it out. To remove this trim, you uh, need some space, so you have to loosen this um, switch panel. And then when you open the, the center console, there's one screw here and one screw on the other side and then you just lift it out like this and you can lift it up. Be a little bit careful because there's the tab here in the front. You don't want it actually two tabs, one on each side. Let me see if we get some lights on those. There's one tab and there's another tab over here. So just be careful you don't break those. You do need to remove one screw there on the on behind. And there's one screw there on the front. They're removed now. There and there. Then you just have to slide the whole panel down because there's a tab here that goes up into this trim. Slide the whole uh, thing down. Take out that uh, trim around the instrument cluster. It's called a pinnacle or a binnacle. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I'll put in that um, emergency start button and uh, auto glow LED um, status LED that I have in my wife's car. This instrument cluster trim, the binnacle, 
it's held in place by two screws in the top. There's one and there's another one on the other side. As well as one here and one here on the bottom. Let me see if you can get that in the picture. Then um, you just tilt the steering wheel down and out and you can just remove that trim. Uh, remember to disconnect that uh, fuel uh, flap button, the uh, connector for it. So let's do that. And here you can see that uh, fuel filler flap connector. You just squeeze in that tab and pull it out. And this is how it looks without that uh, trim. So there's plenty of space to uh, mount those uh, switches. I mean that uh, that button. I'll put uh, a push button here to override the auto glowing system and uh, a status LED status LED on this side. I'll uh, run uh, wires down and through the through the central 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 console and under the seat to the um, BECM, the board computer. Uh, there I can get all the signals I need to uh, hook up the auto glowing device. Okay, to remove the, the center piece, this uh, whole trim, there's one screw down here. I already, I already removed it. There's actually the 4G USB modem for my uh, Wi-Fi access. I'll, uh, I'll also fix the cabling for that. You remove these two screws. I already did that. And then there's one screw here. And behind this trim piece, there's another screw. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm putting in one of these plastic pry bars on the end to separate it. Let me move that power cable off of the way. And I'll, I'm pushing it out. And I'm, at the same time, I'll try and slide it down and, and pull it out. Here you can see that I'm pulling on the edge and, sh and pushing down. And it's, it let go here. The clip is usually much bigger. I, I, I uh, snapped it off, putting it in because of this uh, charge port. Here you can see that I've actually got this piece off now. And this one, this uh, charge, uh, charger, it's, uh, it's just barely making it in there. And that's when it, the, the panel is in place and when you want it out, it, it catches on this. So I'll, I'll trim out a little bit more of the plastic here. That way I can push it in and slide it back up the proper way. Here's the power cables that uh, hook up to the charger. They're, uh, they aren't hooked up to this because this is only on when the ignition is on. I don't want this charger draining the battery while it's parked. This uh, big hole here is uh, a shortcut for fixing um, a leak from the, the heater um, hoses coming from the radiator to the heater core. There's two O-rings on it and those tend to wear out and leak. And the proper way to do that, you have to remove the whole dashboard. But then Land Rover issued a statement that you could do it by making a hole here and then you can access the heater pipes through that hole. And, uh, I've done it, it's really tricky, but it's, it's doable. You need a really, really, really long screwdriver. Uh, other than that, it's um, pretty straightforward. You remove the glove box and, and the dash thing and you get access to the, the, the pipes. So now I have removed that screw on this side. These two screws next to the stereo. Another screw there and the one behind the instrument tester. Uh, uh, trim and this whole piece should now be loose and just remove it carefully. There's a bunch of cables behind there. 
Okay, uh, I moved that trim out of the way a little bit so you can see the the, the rear side, the, what goes on behind the scenes. And this is the original uh, black wire going to the analog clock that was there, the ground for it. So I made a splicer and I should have used black wires but I had run out of that. So this is the ground for the illumination on the voltmeter and the ground for the voltmeter itself for the measuring device. This is the instrument uh, backlight from the original clock. I just kept it and connected it to the, the bulb so I can dim it using the, this button on the stock. So when I dim the instrument and buttons, the, the voltmeter also dims. This purple wire was originally for the, the clock. It's always powered and I didn't want my voltmeter to be always powered. So instead I spliced into the uh, car stereo uh, accessory power and hooked up a wire to connect to the voltmeter and the actual assembly of the voltmeter you can see it fits in the hole and this tightening uh, screw or this ring that you turn to tighten it it, it uh, holds against uh, the taps for the original clock I'm not sure if you can see those so it that fit pretty easily and uh, became a pretty nice fit I'll just need to make a plate and fill in that uh, that extra space around the voltmeter. If that's not so nice, I'll try to make something that matches and makes this look more original. Um, what else? This is the interior uh, temperature sensor sensor temperature sensor for the air conditioning. So this uh, checks what the cabin temperature is and uh, when you put this in auto it will um, uh, automatically choose hot or colder air depending on what you order from the air condition. And these are the connectors for the, the original buttons. So they are really easy to remove, you just push in on this tab and pull out that connector. And then to remove the whole switch, you just push on the top and bottom, there's a couple of small tabs. And then you just push the whole button through the front, like this, and grab it. I'll show you something neat. Here's the bulbs and they're replaceable. That uh, orange one is for when you enable this switch and it uh, lights up that uh, top uh, section there. And this green is the backlighting. Uh, most Range Rovers I think have these bulbs that are uh, replaceable. So let's put that one back. And they're all the same size so you can easily move them around but like I said, this, this cabling on the back it's limited for what you reach. Um, this one is of course um, a whole special unit so you can't move that around. But this, this, this and this and of course these planks on the end. They're, they can go anywhere. And as you can see I'm using my blanks to install the EES disable switch. Which I'm going to upgrade now with an LED so I can see if it's on and off. Because my wife can't figure out that this is off and down is on, that's my way of doing things. You want to flick everything on. I messed up a bit on this one so it looks terrible, sorry. Uh, I just used a Dremel and, and cut the hole and then of course I scraped it and all that stuff. So this is just a dual USB port uh, thing that I screwed in. This is the, the harness for the, the main light switch. Let me show you quickly how we remove this uh, wood trim as well. I pull up the handbrake so that um, the switches move out of the way a little bit. There's one screw there in the, in the rear. 
remove that one. Then you just grab onto the trim and slide it out from under the air condition unit like that. Uh, you want to move your shifter from park, then you get a little bit more space. And then you can access the wiring for the, um, the cigar lighter. I'll remove those, unplug it, and that red and blue wire is for the illumination of the cigar lighter. There's a little bulb there. And there you have it, the whole uh, unit out. You can see there's a lot of space to run cables in there. and and out and I'll get the amplifier under here. I cut off my switch for the air suspension. I'll uh, reroute this one. Uh, this wire goes under the hood and uh, disconnects the power there. Instead I'll run the wire down through the center console under the seat and disconnect the power at the timer relay under the driver's seat. If you ever want to remove these uh, heater controls, uh, you don't have to remove the wood trim to do that. Uh, you just remove these uh, two screws on each side, so four screws. I guess you have to remove the side trim because that covers up these screws. So the side panels on each side. Remove those screws and then just gently try and uh, fish it out there. Be careful with the display so you don't uh, break it. And there you have it, all the connectors on the behind. You can just disconnect those and pull the whole unit out. Here you can see that other charger, same as the one I had on the side, that hooks up to the USB cables for the center console. Um, see I used a little bit thin wires there, so I'm gonna rewire this with thicker wires and also run the amplifier power under the seat. There, much better I used the flash on the camera. Here, here's the cable all fished out from the cabin and I've hooked it up here and if you can see under there there's a, a relay here someplace all the way in there. You see that purple wire there? That's the one that's uh, uh, being cut by the relay and powers the air suspension. These three uh, eight mil bolts are now removed, and you can uh, you can see it's loose. Just be careful with this one. There's a, a clip for the expansion hose from the radiator, and you want to get that out of the way. Ideally, you'll uh, remove the battery uh, battery cover, but as you can see, I can uh, manage without. And be careful with this hose; it can be brittle and you don't want to break it. There we go, just tilting the whole fuse box. That's the underside of the fuse box. And here's my relay. Let's see if I can get at it. Get at it. There we have the, fuse, uh, the relay. Here's the relay for the disable switch for the air suspension. I removed the relay. This is the power from the fuse for the air suspension. This is, these were actually hooked together originally. So that's what I'm, uh, I'm cutting the power to the air suspension with this relay. I'll hook this back together and uh, do the hack under the seat instead. So let's take a look at the finished result. Here's the two wires soldered together. I'll show you, this is the hole for the original footwell uh, lamp and this is my LED strip that I bought off eBay and uh, adapted so I had some football lights. I'll put the, uh, a LED bulb when I get the original um, holder and this is the socket for the diagnostics connector. It goes in there. So I'll put this uh, back in. Uh, this is where I'll put the subwoofer amplifier. There's plenty of space up under here. There's lots of space. We're starting to get there. I hooked those wires into the cigar lighter. I placed that charger for the USB dash uh, USBs are there. And then I 
have the wires for the side USB charger, charger the 4G modem will reach here fine. The wires for the CD changer and subwoofer. That's uh, originally the power to the CD changer and ground. And those are the wires that run to the subwoofer. So I'll see if I can get those orange cables out on the side so I can access them when I get this amplifier. I'll use this yellow wire to um, run the voltmeter and this will be the ground for the voltmeter. So I'm changing things up a little bit, making it more clean and nice. Um, I guess that's it so far. This is the these are the original uh, head unit uh, collectors, regular ISO connectors. And this is the cable that came with my head unit that hooks it up to the power and speakers. Um, Hands-free microphone and uh, digital uh, radio antenna. So uh, let's uh, see what we got there. I got lazy and didn't want to do that much more outside. It started to get really cold. So I brought in this uh, binnacle instrument panel uh, trim um, and I have uh, drilled a hole for the, the starter override and the status lead for the autoglow starting system. I haven't made that system yet for this car. I have it in my excursion. It works good there. I have just recently, like yesterday, figured out all the um, signals and wires I need to hook into. And I made this switch and LED for the EAS uh, disabled uh, system. Uh, it's the same I have put in my wife's car and the same that I used to have in my car without the LED. Now I put in that LED so I can see when the, the system is on off. And uh, here, uh, if you can see inside, there's a small resistor for the for the LED, and then there's just these two two wires that uh, will enable or disable the relay that powers the EAS timer under the driver's seat. So I got all that ready and I, now I can put this into the central center console and uh, run the wire down to the driver's seat. So I will probably do that maybe Saturday. Tomorrow I'm going on a trip. That uh, black wire is for ground for the LED 